had an idea two years ago. Um, I wanted a way that this whole wonderful group of people could work together in a, in an artistic connected way. I was missing connection and I really felt that I wanted to feel a stronger artistic connection. How about we do a we do a thing where each piece of art that we do inspires the next person. The idea was born and then it grew legs and and it turned into this great big creature. That it... Here we are two years on. We're actually on the last round now. We each take our own artwork, do the piece and then send it on to the next. And once that chain reaction has started, we're all going to be reacting to the previous person. I received a piece from uh, Greta. Her feeling for her piece was something that didn't have uh, an exit to, you know, whatever, you know, dilemma or conundrum or any anything that f makes one feel trapped. So I did something that I hadn't done before. I stepped on it as if I were walking in different directions. And I, I received the painting, which was a, of a hedgehog, and I went, oh, I know, I'll just do a yellow background. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I've got some yellow here from the, the sour sock. So I actually got the stalk of the sour sock, soaked them in the yellow ink and popped them on the painting and once they dried I lifted them off to reveal the the marks on there and the hedgehog I did with my lotus ink. In the beginning of this project I had to think a bit about how I was going to do it. Mostly I've been making uh, digital work and I thought how am I going to create pieces on a square? And I took my thoughts to what I used to create. And that work included dragonflies. And what I'm doing is I'm taking pieces of paper that have images on it. And um, I soak in that water bath and I peel off the paper and, um, and it becomes like a, a piece of like skin. We're doing something a little bit different. We're doing something that, that isn't just for ourselves or, or working in a vacuum. You have this influence instead of it being, you know, my walks in the woods that are influencing me, which, you know, some of that still comes through, but I'm also being influenced heavily by the, the, the piece that comes to me. And so we don't know anything about what it is, except we do have a schedule. So we know who it is. So sometimes I anticipate, I'll think, oh, you know, it's going to be so-and-so I'm, and I'm expecting one thing. And then <laughs> I get something completely different. You know, the real uh, challenge for me, I'm uh, really used to paint on a large abstract uh, canvases uh, in which I can be very, very, very free and so I had to uh, try to, to limit myself uh, and uh, not only by the fact to be inspired from by something uh, else, uh, but also by the dimensions. So this has been a really tough. I think that uh, my, my works are uh, a miniature of uh, what I would have done if I had the, the big canvas. So, uh, in fact, they are uh, like uh, abstract, big uh, uh, paintings, but uh, in small. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really like blue. See what I mean about blues? A special blue. 
So when I got Barbara's blue, I jumped right in. No surprise there. Everyone tells me that they pick up on the energy of my work. Um, it's um, usually abstract. And um, a lot of it does feel like I just start painting and it's like something comes through me. So to me, it's I'm guided to create what is happening on the canvas. And, and that's really what it feels like. Sometimes I have like, on this project, uh, I have something I start off with, but then the process itself kind of takes a life of its own and it just kind of comes through. So I just returned back from living in Cambodia for almost a decade back here to Australia and I'd received Ina's work, her lightness of that feather that she photographed, it just reminded me of the Khmer, the Cambodian um, numeral system, how light and flowing that is. So as this was number uh, five in the second round, I decided to write Moi Bi Bai Bun Pram. One, two, three, four, five. So to me, um, being forced to partake in this project, really, it really pushed me out of my comfort zone, like big time. I don't think I would have progressed as much with Canvas as I have now without this project. Um, I'm very happy with what the chain has brought me so far. So prior to this project, I had not worked on Canvas for, oh, what feels like hundreds of years, it's, it's a long time. So I, I am used to working on paper and I have a distinctive style, various types of ink on paper and recently uh, experimenting with uh, collage techniques and everything, but it's a distinctive style. So I'm, I'm, I'm used to working on paper. Uh, I have been doing that for, I think, uh, quite a number of years now. So when we started discussing the possibility of working on these panels, Initially, I was a bit, I wouldn't say panicky, but I was 
slightly worried, like how would that translate? You know, how would my work translate onto canvas? So, but you know, when you're working in your own studio and your own pace and with your own art, it, it's easy to kind of like put those things aside and, you know, work in your go-to medium and on your, um, but now for this project, I had to work on this canvas panel. I mean, we agreed to it. And I will admit that with the first piece, I was really struggling. I, I was really like, okay, you know, I have to do this. To me, the challenge was how to keep the, the feeling of there is a, a translucency in my work that I would like to keep. When I received Wendy's um, chain reaction in round two, it was of a feather and I was really, really excited by it. And straight away I thought of waves and furling and my son's um, surfing. He loves to surf. So it was really something very special to do though. So here we go, on to round three. It started out looking like ruins when I started doing the collage work. And it slowly developed and something told me to add music notes to my collage work. Uh, it just was an interesting touch. And um, after a while, I put it one little piece in every ruins painting that I do. Um, to me, the Bruins uh, series tell stories uh, and bring wisdom. Um, and so one day I was doing a painting and it was coming out of frustration. I was working with frustration of things going on in the world or whatever. And um, I had my collage papers all set out. My music notes were there. And when I finished the painting, I realized, oh, I didn't put the music notes. Maybe I can squeeze them in there. And I was like, no, I don't think they're supposed to be there. And it, I kept thinking about it. And what that told me is that the music notes is the voice.
round one, I had said I was a cut paper and charcoal artist work primarily at that time I was working in black and white. Well, my how things have changed. <laughs> right. And you know, I got to wonder, is it, is it chain reaction or is it the times or is it, you know, just the normal evolution of, of my art practice? I don't know. I, I, I can't really answer that. Of course, you know, lizards are kind of my thing. And, uh, you know, I photograph a lot of lizards and like, uh, and immediately I had the idea what to do with it. Of course, it's a, it's a lone animal, so it has to be a lizard. I decided to come out of my comfort zone a little bit, being a photographer. And um, I wanted to change the background to reflect the political situation. And I made the background blue and yellow in the colors of the Ukrainian flag, painted the background in acrylic, which was, you know, for most people it's like, whatever, acrylic paint. But for me, it's like, I'm using a brush. <laughs> Uh, so it's 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 great to just you know have the opportunity to tell people you know how how we've been working on it and how you know I th I think we're all growing very very much as as artists. Thank you. It's a journey, and, and when we started it, I've always said, you know, we, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. We have no idea. Relative uncertainty. I was in the nation's capital at the Washington Monument, and so the Washington Monument made it into my painting. But what else made it into my painting was the idea of having to wear a mask right? This brand new thing. And so during this chain reaction, where no matter where I was, just the, uh, the fact that the world had changed was beginning to become part of my work. It was a self-portrait of me being masked. So as a fig figurative artist, it's a bit uh, difficult to... Uh, to keep your own style, but be inspired by somebody else's work, and so so I tried I tried to stay within my own style and get inspired by the energy, by a certain color that uh, the previous person used, by a certain texture, by a certain atmosphere that I noticed in the previous artwork. So for for me, this project was really challenging in in just keeping with something and, and just staying true to, to my oil paintings and what I want to do. Here are possible items that I'll be using. And, uh, Maybe mixing in some tea bag pieces that I've used before. Okay, watercolor pens. And I'm also using just regular um, pens, not but prism color also. It's kind of bumpy because I've added thread underneath. I just want this dragonfly to stand out a bit more.
Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I was on the boat and I received his narrative before I received the artwork. And um, the narrative just set me going. I was, he talked about your, you know, lovely, sweet painting and how he needed to do something to like counteract that and take it to the dark. And, and I, of course, I went into battle in the opposite direction because I wanted to haul it back out of the dark again and back into the light. The internet connection was so bad that the image of his artwork wouldn't open. From based on his narrative, I'd already decided what I was going to paint. I just felt the need to paint something that uh, saved the world from the darkness. <laughs> and seafarers see Neptune as their, uh, or a lot of seafarers see Neptune as their protector. So um, yeah, this was my tribute to the um, god of the sea. We were in Greece at the time, so I'm saying Neptune, but we were in Greece at the time, so you're absolutely right, it was Poseidon who um, was saving me from the darkness. Barbara sent me an image full of tremendous energy, like a volcanic eruption. So my immediate response to that was, I need something stable, an anchor point. That's the tree. It symbolizes groundedness, certainty, stability to me.
All right, so how easy is it to use gold leaf? First, I have to show a little bit about why I use gold leaf. Just the magnificence of effects that I can create. And of course, that is not to say it's easy to use gold leaf. It's an act of absolute passion. So my passion drives me forward with it. Shiro sent me the image of a girl. To me, she looked like she could use somebody to talk to who would really listen to her story. So I created a friend for her.
starting the last round was exciting, but also made me realize that it would be the very last painting I would create in the chain. I love that Caroline's painting took me to my ancestral series, um, which I had not painted up to that point in the chain. So it was very fitting since my ancestral series brings with it messages from our ancestors. And uh, it was my very last one for the chain. Here we are almost two years on. We're actually on the last round now. And uh, and here we are, we're doing this thing and we're almost finished and I am so so thankful to all you guys um, of the International Online Art Collective for coming with me on this. Um, what well, seemed like a bit of a crazy idea to start with, but once everybody um, got involved and believed that it really was a thing, it was really going to happen, then um, it, yeah, it's happening.
looking back over the last of this chain reaction over the last couple of years I, I see a change in my work because the original first four rounds were I just moved back from Cambodia and I had no idea what I was doing with my art because I had I'd originally said yes to this work whilst I was living in Cambodia and my art then was the using the lotus stalk as my brush and I came back to Australia and this chain reaction started and I had to produce work and I'm going how am I going to do this I can't get the lotus stalk here I can't paint I can't do this so hey it was fun on the first four rounds but I really feel that um, the last three rounds and completing in this this work here in, in the series of the chain reaction is the work that I love. I'm just so grateful that I could get back to Cambodia and get the lotus stalk to, to paint with.